gentlemen, please join us in a moment of silence as we mark the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, the moment of the armistice that ended World War I. I now ask that you please rise if you are able and direct your attention to the Eternal Light Flagstaff Memorial as the Coast Guard Band plays our national anthem. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, my name is Mark Otto. I'm a U.S. Marine veteran, and I'm also present executive director of the United War Veterans Council. We are best known as being producers of the New York City Veterans Day Parade. As many of you know, Veterans Day's origins can be traced back to the armistice that ended World War I on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month in 1918. It was in 1919 that the tradition began of marking this day, which became known as Armistice Day. In 1954, the Armistice Day was renamed Veterans Day. This year, we will mark the 103rd New York City Veterans Day Parade. In keeping with tradition, we will begin this day by honoring the service and sacrifice of, of veterans throughout the generation. What you're about to be a part of is a replaying procession, followed by some words from the Vice Commandant of the Coast Guard and this year's Grand Marshal, then the playing of taps and a rifle salute. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the replaying. Coast Guard Band, please excuse the music. First up will be our foreign allies, particularly those who observed November 11th in their own home countries. Representing the United Kingdom, British Army Color Sergeant Eddie Rooney, accompanied by Guardsman Kurt Lowe. Representing France, Brigadier General Van Sout Du Kitzhopper, Head of French Military Mission to the UN. Representing Belgium, Yves Wanton, General Representative of Flanders, Council General of Belgium, Delegation of Flanders, and Lieutenant Colonel Mark Booth, Belgian Military Attaché to the UN. Representing Canada, Major Leslie Wenzel, Deputy Military Advisor, Permanent Mission of Canada to the United Nations. Representing Australia, Lieutenant Commander Amy Hansen, Assistant Defense Attaché, Deputy Military Advisor, Permanent Mission of Australia to the United Nations. Representing NATO, General Philippe Levine, Allied Commander, Transformation Headquarters.
Next will be the generations of veterans. Representing World War II and our greatest generation, Army Air Corps veteran, Walter Rybartzik. Walt is 101 years old this year. Representing the Korean War generation, Army veteran and former prisoner of war survivor, James Faulkner, accompanied by Council General Sung Ho Kyu, Council at Councilate General of Republic of Korea. Representing the Vietnam War generation, U.S. Army veteran Fred Gazer, President of Vietnam Veterans of America, Chapter 126. Representing the Desert Storm Generation, retired Marine Chief Warrant Officer David Duke Colvin. Representing the post 9-11 generation, retired Army Master Sergeant Mark Antall, accompanied by Army veteran Alana Duffy. Next will be our military branches of service. Representing the Army, Major General Rodney Falk, command, Commanding General, 99th Readiness Division, U.S. Army Reserve.
representing the Marine Corps, Major General Francis Donovan, Commanding General, 2nd Marine Division. Accompanied by Navy Secretary of the Navy, Honorable Carlos Del Toro. Representing the Navy, Secretary of the Navy, the Honorable Carlos Del Toro, accompanied by Rear Admiral Christopher Scotty Gray, Commander, Navy Region, Mid-Atlantic. Representing the Air Force, Major General John M. Klein, Jr., Commander, U.S. Air Force Expeditionary Center, Joint Base McGuire Dix, Lakehurst, New Jersey. Representing Space Force, Colonel Harry Belmere, Director of Strategic Execution, U.S. Space Force Headquarters. Representing the Coast Guard, Admiral Stephen P. Pullen, Vice Commandant of the Coast Guard. The next brief being laid represents the 2022 New York City Veterans Day Parade. Representing this brief are Marine Veteran and Chairman of the United War Veterans Council, Nick Angione, accompanied by our Parade Grand Marshal, retired Coast Guard Master Chief Petty Officer Vince Patton, and Mayor of the City of New York, Eric Adams. We'll have representatives from our key sponsors pay their respects. We would not be able to produce this event or the parade without their support. 
representing J.P. Morgan Chase, retired Army Colonel Mark Elliott, Managing Director of Military and Veterans Affairs. Representing Pfizer, Navy veteran Vivian Greentree, PhD, Senior Vice President and Head of Global Corporate Citizenship. Representing Cushman and Wakefield, Bruce Bosler, Chairman of Global Brokerage. Representing the Wounded Warrior Project. Retired Army Lieutenant General Mike Winnington, CEO. Representing T Mobile, Daryl Hawkins. Marine Veteran, Senior Vice President, West Region, Regional Network and Engineering Operations, T-Mobile. At this point, I'd like the Coast Guard Color Band to please kill the music. Next, I'd like everybody that was in the reef line procession to pull forward into this area towards me. Just pull forward to Nick. Yep. No, no, no. We just want you to pull closer to the beach. So everybody hold in. We don't want you 100 yards away. That's all. <laughs> so just pull forward. There's no formation. All right. Yep. Don't be bashful. Just pull forward. <laughs> all right. So ladies and gentlemen, get on the inside. You can pull forward. Change over and have the presentation that the speaker is going to speak next. All right. Each year, the parade highlights the featured service branch. This year, it's the United States Coast Guard. We are honored to have here with us today one of their senior leaders who will update us on today's Coast Guard. Admiral Stephen Pullen serves as the 33rd Vice Commandant of the United States Coast Guard. As the Vice Service Chief and Chief Operating Officer, Admiral Pullen executes the Commandant's strategic intent, manages internal organizational governance, and serves as the Component Acquisition Executive. Please join me in welcoming to the podium Admiral Stephen Pullen, Vice Commandant of the United States Coast Guard. Well, good morning, everybody. Let me first 
thank Secretary Del Toro for being here, our Secretary of the Navy. Mr. Del Toro, we are honored to be a vital part of the Joint Force. We love being one of the sea services and ensuring America's advantage to sea. So, Mr. Secretary, it's an honor to see, here, see you here, and thank you. Uh, to uh, Mayor Adams, thank you, sir. Thank you for embracing your Coast Guard. Thank you for being a Coast Guard city, and thank you for supporting our veterans. Commissioner Hendon, thank you as well, sir, for everything that you do to our flag officers, our senior officials, our elected officials, our dignitaries, our allies, our partners, our veterans and our families. Thank you for being here. It's just a tremendous honor to share a few words with you at this solemn ceremony. I'm here with our 14th Master Chief Petty Officer of the Coast Guard, Master Chief Pete Jones, and his lovely wife, Carol, representing our military family members. Uh, Master Chief Jones, I can't see you. Thank you from the back there. Carol, thank you for being here as well. Yes, a round of applause. You know, and it is quite an honor to be here where our Coast Guard was founded, where the vision for a U.S. Coast Guard uh, was first put, put to paper with Alexander Hamilton, and here we stand 232 years later, ensuring America's safety, security, environmental, environmental protection, and America's economic prosperity. And I, I'm so grateful that you've chosen to honor the Reverend Dr. Vince Patton, our eighth Master Chief Petty Officer of the Coast Guard, his Grand Marshal. I can't think of a better representative for our service or for the Joint Force, Master Chief. Thank you. Our nation owes in its, its existence to the generations of Americans who have served in uniform to defend our freedom. We are keenly aware of the suffering that's caused by aggression around the world. The veterans who wear the uniform of our armed forces have ensured that Americans enjoy security and prosperity grounded in freedom and the rule of law. Today, we pause to honor the memory of those who served in the past and cherish the devotion of those who serve today. On behalf of all those who serve in the United States Coast Guard and all the other branches of our military, and I stand here, yes, as a representative of the Coast Guard, but a representative of a joint force that stands ready today to protect America's vital interests here and around the globe. Ladies and gentlemen, we are a ready force and we are ready to protect America's interests. Yes, indeed. And thanks again for your dedication. It's entirely appropriate that we take one day out of the year to recognize the people who have given so much to their country and to their fellow Americans. And although veterans answered the call to serve, the best way we can honor their dedication is to support them not just today, but every day. Our gratitude must be enduring, and the actions to support our veterans and their families must be equally enduring. I'm thankful that so many people came here today to recognize that and to honor our veterans. I'm so grateful for everything that you do so that we who are called to serve can serve. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. It's quite an honor to be in the featured service. It's great to be in New York. Semper Paratus, everybody. Next, I'd like to invite to the podium Bruce Mosler, who's been a longtime member of our great executive committee and a staunch supporter of our country's veterans. Bruce is chairman of Global Brokerage at Cushman and Wakefield. Company, he co-chairs the board of the Intrepid Museum and is on the board of the Fisher House. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Bruce Mosler. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, members of our military, on this Veterans Day, as we so often have before, we are reminded that the price of freedom is never free. It comes at a significant cost. We have seen this year what brutal aggression looks like. We have seen Russian President Vladimir Putin ignore the sovereignty of a neighboring nation, a nation that was living in peace until through his decision 
and I remind you, his alone. And that nation was subjected to invasion and devastation. We have seen his troops, atrocities committed in plain sight. We have heard his false narratives propagated to his own people and more significantly the world. He must, and undoubtedly, he will be held accountable. In this new strategic environment, an unintended consequence of Putin's actions has been a more unified NATO. And as we contend with the threat of the possible use of nuclear weapons, indeed perhaps more consequentially the very real threat of multilateral nuclear proliferation, once again, American leadership is essential, essential to restoring global stability. Bottom line, we do well on this day when we salute the half of the 1% who protect our nation's freedoms. We do well to remember those who in the past when our nation arrived at that hour of need and heard the call, who shall we send and who shall go for us? We do well to remember today all those who answered that call with the resounding, send me, I will go. Ladies and gentlemen, we must be clear that our veterans are due way more than a mere thank you. They are, in fact, our boldest and greatest, and they are also made up and make up the most diverse workforce to recruit from. So we must hire them, but not for charitable reasons. We must hire them because they make up the best in class employees. Their ability to motivate, leadership, and high character will undoubtedly improve any organization's culture, morale, and yes, indeed, their bottom line. I'm happy to say this year that my very own Christian Wakefield is a top 10 rated military employer. We have earned that rank because of our dedicated programs and our dedicated veterans. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it is my absolute privilege to introduce our Grand Marshal, retired Master Chief Vincent W. Patton, U.S. Coast Guard. The Coast Guard, as you've already heard, eighth Master Chief Officer from 1998 to 2002. During his career, Master Chief Patton served aboard three Coast Guard cars, sailing from both the Atlantic and Pacific ports, accumulating over five years of service at sea. He participated on more than 50, I'll repeat that, 50 search and rescue operations, saving countless lives and property. And in his 30 years of service, Chief Patton visited 33 countries, including areas of active military conflict Bosnia, Kosovo, and Afghanistan. He has received too many military awards for me to mention all of them today, but let me mention a few. Amongst many others, the Distinguished Service Medal, two Meritorious Service Medals, three Coast Guard Accommodation Medals, three Coast Guard Achievement Medals, the Commandant's Letter of Commandant, uh, Commendation Ribbon, and eight, I'll repeat that, eight Meritorious Team Awards. Ladies and gentlemen, in addition to all of that, and incredibly, all of Master Chief Patton's college education was achieved while on active duty. I want you to listen closely to this man's degrees. First, a doctorate of education from American University in Washington, D.C. A master in counseling degree from Loyola University in Chicago a Bachelor of Science in Social Work from Shaw College in Detroit, and a Bachelor of Arts in Communication from Pacific College in Anglin, California. What's more, he was a 2002 torchbearer for the Olympic Games. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure, but more importantly, high honor, to introduce our Grand Marshal, retired Master Chief Vincent Patton. guests, good morning. Well, I guess I don't need to speak much because uh, this, uh, kind of my bio says it all. But you know, uh, I, I will just sort of talk a little bit about this whole event. All this morning I took part in a number of uh, uh, media interviews, both on television and radio, and the common question that was asked is, what does this day mean to you? And my answer is something that I kind of throw back at, is that what this day means to me is 
for 17.4 million veterans in our country that have served our country well, have worn the country's cloth, have fought in battles, have supported and defended the Constitution of the United States. So what this day means to me for all of that is that this is our day. This is not just my day as the uh, Grand Marshal. I, the way I see it, I'm the representative for all 17.4 million veterans. I will wave to the crowd. I will say hello to everybody. I will accept the thank you for your service, but I will do it not for me, but I will do it for 17.4 million people. And that includes those of you here in the audience, and also to our family members. They too have served, and let us not forget that. that. As we think about honoring our veterans, let us not forget about our family members who are so crucial, so critical to the acceptance of making sure that our service members and our veterans do their job effectively. This is a glorious day. This is a glorious day. This is a day that while it may rain, we folks in the Coast Guard believe that, you know, nobody wants to be rescued in good weather. <laughs> so this is just a fine Coast Guard day. So I thank you all for being here, and God bless you all in Super Products. Let's party. Ladies and gentlemen, the chapel will now give his benediction. Please pray with me. Eternal Father, may we remember today the many members of our armed forces who gave their life for the cause of freedom around the world. May we also honor the lives of those lost, of our allies and partners, and the many countries who have fought shoulder to shoulder with the United States help preserve the liberties we enjoy today. We are also grateful that despite the wars of previous generations, many of those we fought against are now some of our closest allies and partners. May the tremendous resolve, grit, and determination of past generations remind us of the debt of gratitude we have for our veterans. We are also grateful for the profound appreciation for our country's military as evidenced by this incredible support so clearly seen in New York City on this Veterans Day. We pray that our soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, Coast Guardsmen, and Guardians feel this appreciation and understand the special place they hold within our country's heart. May we be forever grateful for those, their service, and the mighty accomplishments they have achieved. May our nation honor the sacrifices made especially those who gave their all. We also recognize this Veterans Day as the 104th year since the close of World War I, when on the 11th hour, on the 11th day of the 11th month, the First World War came to an end. We pray that the events leading up to another global conflict may never happen again, and that the United States and our allies and partners will be vigilant in peace as in times of war. We pray also that our young men and women will draw on the cloth of our nation, continue to defend our freedoms with the same vigor and selfless determination that defined previous generations. We ask all this in your holy and abiding name. Amen. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, next there will be a rifle salute followed by the playing of taps. The 21-gun salute will be comprised of seven riflemen firing off three volleys. 